Oftentimes when you hear people talk about exercises to help strengthen up your knee or your hips in case you have arthritis, it involves things like squats and maybe wall sits, and they're great exercises. But I've got clients that have such a painful knee that even doing a squat or a wall sit's painful. So in this video, I'm gonna give you basic strengthening exercises that you can do that aren't gonna hurt the knee, that aren't gonna be painful, and I'll show you ways in which you can progress them. Stay tuned till the end of the video because I'm gonna give you a bonus exercise that's gonna talk about another way in which you can reduce arthritic pain for those who wanna go next level. So go get on a pair of sweats or a pair of shorts, get comfortable, and let's get ready to work. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Ed Debu, physical therapist out of Integrated Physical Therapy in Bellingham, Washington. One of the most important things to remember when you're talking about an arthritic joint, and it doesn't matter if it's a knee, a hip, a thumb, doesn't matter. What we want to try to do is maximize the range of motion and maximize your strength. And what that does is, is it takes a little bit of the load off of the joint and can help it feel better and function better. So when we're talking specifically about knee arthritis, what we really want to do is try to strengthen up the muscles around the knee, as well as try to improve the mobility so we have as much flexion, which is bending, and as much extension, which is strengthening of the knee. So let's get started. The first two exercises we're going to do, you get to lie down, and we're going to work on the front quadricep muscle here. You're going to lie down, and in this situation, we're going to work on the left leg. So ideally what you want to do is the quad muscle is the one we're after here. So what you'll do is you're squeezing your quad muscle tight, your thigh muscle tight. You're going to pull your foot up just a little bit. If you're starting to get a pull in your calf muscle, you can ease up on the amount of pulling you're going to do of your foot. But otherwise, I want you to pull your foot up a little bit, squeeze your calf muscle tight. Now you're going to engage your core, so a slight little posterior tilt or imprint if you're a Pilates person. Try to take your belly button in towards your spine. That kind of protects your low back a little bit. So now I've got belly button towards the spine. I've got my foot pulled up a little bit and I've got my quad squeezed nice and tight. And then I'm gonna to try to lift my leg up. And then I'm gonna come back down and just touch and go. Keeping the abdominal area nice and tight so we're getting a little bit of a core strengthening response as well too. If that starts to get easy for you, you can do the same thing up on your elbows. Now when I'm on my elbows, it's the same kind of thing, but now it's a little bit harder to do. Once that starts to get a little bit easier on your elbows, guess what? We can go up onto our hands. So now I'm on my hands here, and this is definitely a bit more challenging to do it this way. And I can definitely feel the muscles in the front of my leg working that much harder. With all of these strengthening exercises, what you want to try to do is keep your repetition range between maybe 8 to 15. And I want you to work hard enough to where you're getting a strengthening response or the signaling is great enough so that you're actually going to get a muscle that's going to respond by getting stronger. So if it's too easy, eh, not really doing much. If it's too hard, yeah, you might hurt yourself. And so 8 to 15 reps, but when you're done with each set of reps, you should be fatigued. Not to a point of failure, but those last few repetitions should be a little bit harder to get, and then you take a little break of anywhere from 30 seconds to maybe even a couple minutes if you need to. The second exercise we're gonna do is gonna work on our glutes, or basically our hip muscles. And then what you'll do is you're gonna lift your buns up off the table and back down again. Now in this situation, I'm doing both legs together. When I get up to the top, I'm really squeezing my buns tight. I really want to activate the glute and back down again. Now for some people, this is where they might start. If you find that a double leg bridge is a little bit too easy, what you can do is make it harder. So one way to make it harder, in this example, I'm going to work my left leg. To make it harder, I'm going to take my right leg and stagger it just a little bit. So now my left leg is closer to my buns and my right leg is further out. Now when I come up, I could definitely feel my left leg and my left glute doing a little bit more work. So this is another way now to progress it to make it harder. Because remember with strength training, the signaling must be strong enough to where the muscle actually says, hey, you know what, Ed's doing something, I better come back stronger. 
Once that starts to get easier, take the opposite leg and hold it up. Keep it parallel with the other leg, and then do a single leg bridge. And back down again. And back down again. This is probably the most advanced version of it, and you really get a nice strengthening response into that glute and hip area. The next two strengthening exercises we will do standing up. I'm a big believer in maximizing the exercise the best we can. So what we'll do now is we're gonna stand, use a chair for a little bit of balance, and then we're gonna work on abduction of our leg. So I've got a nice strong pillar on my support leg here. My knee is not locked out, so there's a slight bend in my leg. So my quads are activated, holding on for a little bit of balance, and then I'm bringing my leg out. It's not a very big motion. And what you feel is, you're gonna feel your support leg working, but you're also gonna get a little bit of work on this abductor muscle here as well too. So we're really accomplishing quite a bit. Now what I like about this exercise, it's pretty simple, but we can make it a lot more challenging by bringing our balance into it as well too. So now if you can, to make it harder, don't hold on. So now we're working on strengthening as well as balance. I don't wanna bring my leg up too high to get a whole shift of my pelvis. So remember, you might only be able to go this far and that's fine, but just go nice and slow and the least amount of help with your balance so we're getting a little bit of balance as well as strength. Of course, you would repeat the same thing on the other side. So first get nice and solid on your support leg. Remember, your knee is not locked out and I'm coming out to my side and pausing and back down. I can make it harder by not holding on or you may even need to have a little bit of a weight on your ankle just to give it a little bit more resistance. The last strengthening exercise is gonna work on our calf muscles or the gastrocnemius. And it's gonna be a simple exercise, but can be very effective. So what you'll do first is you're gonna face the wall. And once again, we're gonna start off easy and I'll tell you how to make it harder. So here I'll just go fingertip balance and I'm gonna come up on my toes, back down slowly. Back up and back down. Now, let's say for example, that gets pretty easy then what I can do is, is I can stand on one leg. Now I've got a little bit more balance and I'm gonna come up and back down. Let's say you're right in the middle, you can't quite get all the way up, go ahead and rest your foot on the ground, the opposite foot. So now it's like right in between. So there might be the place that you come in at when you're starting your exercises. Then of course you would switch and work the other side. And remember to do these exercises on both legs. You may have arthritis only on one knee, for example, that's really bothering you, but you must do the strengthening and the stretching on both sides. If you find a side that's a little bit weaker, definitely give it a little bit more work so that eventually you can equalize the strength and range of motion between sides. Now we're gonna get into a few flexibility exercises. Like I said at the beginning, for any arthritic joint, our goal is to improve the mobility and the strength surrounding the joint to take the stress off the joint. The first is just a calf stretch. So what you'll do is you'll face the wall, make sure your foot's pointing straight towards the wall. Take a step in, lean forward, keeping your heel down. We've done this stretch probably since junior high and you're gonna get a nice stretch right in the calf muscle right through there. I'm gonna have you hold all of your stretches for about 20 to 30 seconds and repeat that two to three times on each side. One common issue I see in the clinic is the inability to straighten out the arthritic knee. So in this example, let's pretend my left knee is the arthritic one. Oftentimes what you'll find is that you're not able to completely straighten it out. Sometimes that's because the joint has become a little bit thickened and maybe a little bit enlarged, but a lot of times it's a combination of some tightness in the hamstring. So the easiest and safest way to stretch the hamstring is just to sit in a chair where you're comfortable, take your leg out as far as you can, pull your foot up just a little bit. That'll give you a little bit of a calf stretch also, but remember the focus is the hamstring. We already did the calf stretch, but the focus is the hamstring, but we can get a little two for one action by pulling your foot up. Then what you'll do is you're gonna lean forward from the hips. Now it's careful, we don't wanna stress our back while we're stretching our hamstring. So what I don't want you to do is this. I want you to notice how rounded my spine is. And that's not really a good idea at all. In fact, if you have unfortunately osteoporosis or osteopenia, I'll put a link right up here to a video that talks about specific movements that you really should avoid so that you don't put additional stress on your spine. 
So back to this one here, I'm gonna sit up nice and tall and I'm gonna get my movement from my hips. So I still have that curve in my spine and I'm gonna lean forward and for me right there, I'm already getting a solid hamstring stretch right there. And I'm gonna hold that for about 20 to 30 seconds and then repeat that. Making YouTube videos can be kind of lonely sometimes when there's no comments, guys. So if you are enjoying the videos, if you feel like it's helpful, leave a comment down below and let me know. Now we need to get into a stretch for the quadriceps. So back in the day, we used to just grab our leg and pull it up. It's no big deal. You would just grab it, pull it up, and feel a stretch through there. Now if you can do it that way, great. Go ahead and once again, use something for a little bit of balance if you need to. Pull it up through here, stand up nice and tall, and you're gonna hold that for about a 30 second stretch. If you can't, however, you're gonna need some props. Get yourself a chair, not one that rolls. I'm in the clinic, so it's a rolling chair. But get something firm that you can hold on to. This example, I'm gonna stretch my left, and we're gonna put it back on maybe another chair or the bed, and then you're gonna stand up nice and tall. Now the key with this is I want your knee to be behind your hip, and that's really critical as opposed to my knee is now in line with my hip, you're not gonna get as good of a stretch. So come forward or bring this further back. So now if you can notice, my knee is behind my hip. I'm gonna squeeze my buns, bring my buns forward towards the chair, drop down if I need to, and that's giving me a solid stretch in my quad. For the last bonus exercise, we're gonna talk about trigger points. So you're gonna need a dowel or something like this. This is pretty long because if you've watched any of my other videos, I use this for shoulders and different things like that. But for a knee, it can be half of this. So like, you know, a couple, three feet is fine. Sometimes we get a trigger point on the inside of the knee that when it's activated, it can significantly increase the amount of pain we're experiencing in the knee. And stretching and strengthening will not take care of a trigger point. The way we work on it is you can get one of those handheld percussion or massage guns, or you can go old school with a dowel. So how do you know if you have it? We're just gonna check it. Turn your leg to the outside so you can get to the inner part of the thigh muscle all the way down here and put a firm amount of pressure on there and see if you've got a sore spot right there. Maybe compare it to the other side. A little bit of soreness is normal, but in this example, let's say my right knee is the arthritic knee, and I check it, and I'm like, wow, yeah, no, that is significantly more tender than this side. Then what I'm gonna do is, for about 30 to 60 seconds, I'm gonna put enough pressure to where it's slightly face cringing. Trigger point work should not be super painful, but it's not a walk in the park either. I'll put another video link right up here that talks specifically and goes a little bit more in depth about how you can use the dowel or trigger point work to reduce your pain. I recommend that you try to get this exercise sequence done three times in a week. Of course, just like anything else, guys, the more we put into it, the more we're gonna get out of it. If you're consistent with the program, you should start to definitely feel improvement within even a week or two of doing the exercises. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so now. Turn on your notifications, ding, so you never miss another one of my videos. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. And if it helps your knee, let me know. Sometimes I feel like I'm just making these videos and no one's even watching them. So leave me a comment down below.